Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Uh, Coach, can you give us an opening statement about tonight's game? Yeah, pretty straightforward. The team that played better won the game. Um, they appeared more prepared, uh, but I think that was a result of, um, you know, Gavin puts a good swing on a, on a pitch. Um, it's kind of the third time in a row he beat our guy that particular way. Um, and then uh, a couple things don't go our way. And it, it kind of, you know, got emotional there, a little more emotional than it usually does. But for for a proper reason with the situation, but again, I, I think the basics come of, you know, they played better. And even though the, we didn't bring our best, uh, you're within striking distance um, against their guy there at the end of the game. Thank you. We'll open up questions for AJ and Dylan right now. First question over here. Dylan, what did you just have working well for you tonight? Uh, I would say just kind of breathing and calming down and trusting my guy behind the plate and just uh, really feeling through what he was going through and just trying to match our mindsets up. And I think uh, it worked well tonight. Question right there. For both players, what gives you confidence that you all will be able to bounce back tomorrow and be prepared by the time first pitch rolls around? AJ, hey, can you answer first? Yeah, for me, the fact that we've done it before, like we're not new to this. Obviously, we've got some of the best hitters in the country. So, yeah, we've done it before. <coughs> yeah, I would say the same. And the guy on the mound for us has proven himself. So, Right down here. AJ, hey, I know this was the second straight third inning that was kind of rocky. What were, Was this similar to Florida State or different? And, and, and how did you kind of try to work through that today? I mean, you just kind of keep throwing pitches. I think it was a little different. Um, yeah, you just keep throwing pitches. Matt Tomey from World Baseball Network. AJ, tough coming into the first inning and what you had to adjust um, and also with um, Scott reaching on the field here by your shortstop. How do you just feel that the defense needs to hold um, and limit you know, three errors tonight and what lies ahead for tomorrow? I mean, it's nothing like too serious. Like it's not that serious. Like we gotta fix the problem or anything. We just gotta play the baseball we can play. Any more questions for the student athletes? One more, right down here. For both guys, your coach said that the game was a maybe the dugout was a little more emotional tonight. Was that unavoidable in some ways, or you know, is that sort of a, a disappointment to kind of get here and have it happen? Dylan, can you answer that first? I wouldn't say it's a disappointment, but I would say it kind of catches you to a, a surprise whenever you get to this stage, I would say. But I wouldn't say it's a disappointment. I think we'll be right back in the dugout just like we normally are tomorrow. Okay. AJ and Dylan, thank you very much for your time. Okay, we'll open up for questions for Coach. Tony, kind of the same question Ben asked the players. What what gives you confidence that you, confidence that you guys will respond the right way tomorrow? Um, I, I think we can definitely play better. I mean, that's one thing. And then, yeah, you kind of – this isn't a, a traditional series against a SEC opponent or just a good opponent, whether it be Illinois or everybody else that's on our schedule. But, you know, you go through the season and – and you welcome competition for a reason. It'll make you better in a few different ways. So you find out different ways to respond. And, and you know, you can either get frustrated that tonight went the way that it did, or you can get more determined. And uh, we've got guys that have done that in the past a lot where, you know, determination uh, kicks up, play kicks up. Right behind. Tony, that's three errors in two of the four games uh, while in Omaha, and you had only done it once the entire regular season. Can can you put your thumb on any reason why defense has maybe been an issue here? No, I think, I mean, uh, you know, there's certainly been a, a few quirky plays. Um, I don't even know what happened on, on the ball up the middle. Uh, there was a clean hit. Um, 
by Appel. I, I don't even know what happened, if it hit the bag or whatever it did. So, you know, guys have put the ball in play against our guys, and they're going to continue to do that. We don't quite have the strikeout uh, type of staff that we did last year. Uh, we get our fair share, but guys put the ball in play, and, you know, they find some, found some holes tonight, as did Florida State. And, um, you know, also there's been, there's been some unique ones, to be fair, uh, to our guys. So I think it's about getting familiar with the ballpark, which by now our guys should be, and then just playing ball. And like I said, I think tonight, um, you know, maybe a little bit more credit to the game than, than you should give it, which is crazy to say uh, based off the crowd we had. Um, but, but, I, but I think that's a true statement. Okay, we'll go right here. Joe Healy, D1 Baseball. Have to imagine that there's no one but Drew you'd want on the mound in this situation with your backs against the wall, just given his experience and his demeanor. Yeah, I mean, I think we like any time he gets to throw for us. Um, you know, it's kind of been that way uh, since his freshman year, and the, the fall was slower based off how he entered the program. Um, he was recovering and then hasn't looked back. And um, there's been some ups and downs, but it, it's not like it's been a roller coaster. He's been a blessing to have in the program as far as the approach he brings to the dugout or just the facility in general and how he works. And, you know, he's usually when your leaders um, embody what you got going on and it's a positive, uh, you, I didn't say that appropriately, but uh, when, when your leaders uh, have the right characteristics, it usually bleeds into the rest of the team and the dugout. And again, he's an unselfish kid that likes to compete. And uh, I think that, again, has kind of bled throughout the rest of the dugout, especially with younger guys that have learned from him, like Deloy. Hey, Tony, what's the benefit of making their bullpen work the way you guys did late? And does it remind you at all of that second game against Evansville? Um, a little bit. I mean, you know, I said earlier, as crazy as it is, uh, that Evansville game, you know, was a little bit good for us. You know, this time of year, you're only going to be able to go on a, a streak for so long. Um, and I think you need to be reminded every now and then again of, of certain things you need to do. That Evansville game did that to us, and, and this was similar. Uh, we were within striking distance. We were able to see what they had available in, in the bullpen. But, you know, A&M's got some guys that are unused, and I'm not even sure they've announced a starter tomorrow. So they're not going to run out of guys, but it certainly helps to have an idea of, you know, who you'll face and, and to, to stay in the fight. I mean, ideally, this is a three-round bout that you're in, and – you know, every inning has some weight to it uh, when, when the whole thing is finished. Tony, you guys saw Prager in the SEC tournament, and he was pretty effective tonight, even though you guys scratched out eight hits. Uh, what made him good tonight? Um, you know, the change of speed factor is is, is bread and butter, and um, it's not like he did not do that in Hoover. Uh, I think the difference was they played a little bit better defense behind him, um, and then our guys had to play from behind. And uh, not only was it you know, from behind on the scoreboard. But again, I, I think a little bit of a downer, um, you know, early in the game with where we were at. Having said that, we were in pole position several times to knock him out, you know, earlier than we did. And, you know, it, it kind of seemed to be a theme on offense. Um, just one more quality at bat or guy on base could could have altered some things or, or changed things the way they use their bullpen. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, I mean, the guys did do okay at the plate. It's just... You can't separate the at bats from the rest of the game. You've got base running, you've got defense, you've got pitching, and of course, you've got the hitting as well. Ryan. Tony, you mentioned the emotional part of it. In a game this intense, what do you do? How does the team reel that back in when it needs to be reeled in? I think you just play baseball and, you know, make sure um, that you don't put so much weight on how big the crowd is or the extra cameras and things like that that you lose sight of just some fundamentals or important things that go on in the game, like communicating or focusing on whatever the certain task is. Um, you know, so it's it's true and whatever you're going to be talking about, simple's better. So I, I would kind of summarize it by saying that. Tony, how, uh, was it a tough decision to, to not put Inslane Center tonight? Was it a close thing? And uh, would, it, would there be a chance it could be out there tomorrow? Yeah, there's a chance tomorrow. And, um, you know, it, it was close. And, uh, you know, you kind of weigh your options. Again, at the very least, I mean, where I grew up in Missouri, I had to watch my dad coach. Single elimination is not appropriate for baseball um, based off sample size and things like that. So, 
given the fact you know we potentially have two or three games to play, wasn't too comfortable with the idea of maybe him pushing it after a couple of days of non-game action. And, and of course, he's got the, the fighter mentality. Um, so it was a difficult decision. And I would say, uh, you go back to the hotel, it's probably one of about seven, eight, 17, 18 uh, that I could have made better. Uh, but it's what we did and uh, didn't work out. We didn't play well enough tonight, but he certainly had some great at-bats. We'll see what, he, what he's got going tomorrow. Peter Burnett from the Council Bluffs Nine Pareo. Question about Marcus. First College World Series appearance for him tonight. Came in against the top of the lineup. What did you think of, of his uh, work tonight? And what have you seen in his development since coming from Iowa Western? Yeah, no, he's he's matured a lot. Um, obviously a fantastic junior college and, and set up over there. Um, and we thought he would get more development as a freshman, but he, he just didn't quite stay healthy. Um, and there's so much talent over there. He came in, you know, being... A kid from the north, very little experience, um, a lot of two-way time. He's, he's swung the bat for us some. So he's, he's come a long way on the mound, and the way we kind of judge him is basically just how the ball's coming out. He's either throwing it with conviction or he's not, and he was tonight. And, uh, you know, again, I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't give credit in any inning for, for management stuff on my end, but uh, he did his first job, and then we kind of went, you know, quick to the bullpen on him. It would have been interesting to see how well he could have thrown the ball. But the exciting thing is he's available, you know, in, in the future here for us. Okay, one more question for Coach Ray here. Tony, kind of a big picture thing. When you take in this atmosphere, soaking it in, and, and tickets are being scalped, and it's, you know, the popularity, and you've talked about it, the popularity of college baseball is undeniable. There's also kind of this dynamic that our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. When you think about some of these games and how long they are, how do you kind of relate the popularity of college baseball at a time where a lot in the, in the lengths of these games with, with the attention spans that we all have that are shrinking? Yeah, no, I, I get it. And I think the 22nd clock has, uh, you know, been, been productive. Um, but I'm not so sure people wouldn't come to the, to the park anyway. Um, Heck, everyone's attention span is brutal because of what we hold in our hands all day long uh, with, with our phones. But, man, this thing has turned into a monster. Um, you know, the, the draft is shorter. There's fewer minor league teams. Um, there's more resources that these kids see. And I'm not – I don't want any scouts to slash my tires. But it, it certainly makes sense for a lot of guys now to go on to school. And, and I mean, Grohovac is the size of uh, probably some of the trucks that are on that campus down there. And the guy behind him is bigger. And you look at our infield, not one of those four guys looks like an infielder other than Blake Burke, you know, kind of looks like a big first baseman. So, man, these little kids, but also adults, have th these guys that, you know, you could go pay a ton of money and watch the Braves play. Um, but you can get right up close to these guys, and they're the next guy on the Braves or the Phillies or whatever it might be. And then you sprinkle in the constant drama all season long that you, you kind of only get an MLB in the playoffs. Um, so, like I said, it's turned into a monster, and a lot of it is because of the celebrities that I get to throw BP to or that we get a stress about getting, you know, Charlie Condon out or, or whoever it might be. Um, so I, I think you could make it two and a half hours. You can make it four hours, um, you know, which if it's a big game, it's probably going to be four with the commercials and all that BS. Um, but I think you show up and you have your hot dog. And if you want to have a beverage, you have a beverage. And you yell stuff at me if you're wearing maroon. And, and you know, the orange people, you know, yell, yell crazy stuff at the other team. And I, I don't know that you'd want it any other way. Obviously, we'd like to win tonight. But. Pretty damn good stuff. Unfortunately, we don't get to enjoy it like you guys do. We got to try and do our jobs, and we certainly need to do it better than we did tonight. At least I do. Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you all.